Today we're talking about how to reach your peak performance in both your health and your business. Hi, I'm Tracy. And I'm Jessica, and this is She's on Top, the community that celebrates women. Dr. Megan Walker is a naturopathic doctor, speaker, serial entrepreneur, and mother. She also hosts a weekly podcast called Anthropology, which focuses on business, body, brain, and the inner badass of female entrepreneurs and go-getters. We were recently invited to be guests on Megan's podcast, and it was so much fun. We'll put a link below so you can check it out. Interviewing Megan was incredible. Her insights into health and how it connects to your success as an entrepreneur completely changed the way we viewed our business and really made us look at our personal journey too. I got sick in high school and I met a naturopathic doctor and I went, this is the smartest way of thinking I have ever heard of. It wasn't what has gone on for the last 72 hours. It was tell me how your body has always and historically responded to stress. And I was like, ah, it is such an intelligent line of questioning that I couldn't let go of it. We've really got two arms. On the, for consumers, we have, our brand is called Anthropology Performance Labs, and we focus on um, health optimization and human potential medicine for female entrepreneurs. And uh, that really came about in terms of my own experience working in the entrepreneurial world, and I was simultaneously a naturopathic doctor, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, these people aren't eating, and they're not moving, and they don't have time for, they don't have time to care for themselves, and that's actually the biggest thing that so many people were abutting against. They're like, I don't have energy to take my business to the next level, and it was just so easy for me to be like, try this, and do this, and do this, and so we really, we work with entrepreneurs on that side, so they can amplify their message. The other side of our business is called Called clinician business labs and on that side we help clinicians scale and amplify their business by teaching them really distinct systems. I feel like there's phases to female entrepreneurs relationships with their health so the first phase is like I feel like inherently people who are drawn to entrepreneurship they just they can put their head down and go it's one of the things I think we're all capable of doing but just like you hit ceilings of complexity in your business I think there is a, a moment of reckoning that women tend to go through well men go through it too but where you're just like, I can't, I cannot do this in this iteration anymore. I don't, it starts with, I don't have enough time. And really I don't have enough time. Usually means I don't have enough energy. Or the other thing that will happen for women is, is fertility may be something that comes up for them. I think, I think any kind of hormonal cycle is actually this huge gift that we have because it actually makes us so much more attuned to what's going on with respect to our bodies. And that's usually the first thing that women will come in my door with. They're like, I want to get pregnant and I, and I can't. Or I've always kind of been okay and I just can't manage this symptom anymore. And it's usually related to something to do with hormones, whether that's menstrual cycles or uh, thyroid health. Thyroid's a really big one because when we fully deplete our system, it kind of kicks in and it's like the reserve tank. And for so many women, that's where their first symptoms start to, uh, start to emerge. I really feel like once we can cross that threshold and get women to understand that piece, we can take them to a whole new level in terms of how their health can actually influence and fuel their business and their leadership and their teams and everything else that they have in front of them. No matter what you're doing, I feel like you become a mother and it's just like this Pandora's box of, of life lessons. I, I really feel like the thing that's worked for me is defining balance on my own terms. So I think it's really easy to listen to all these experts and I feel like a lot of these experts are men who are like, you gotta own your morning and you've gotta, you gotta be up at 5 a.m. and then you have to meditate and then you have to do this. And, you have, and I was like, oh my gosh, like you clearly have a nanny or someone who's taking care of things for you. And so I really like broke free from all of the, the things that you should do. Like even as a healthcare provider, I still got caught up in the, oh, I should do this in the, in the morning. And I, I finally was like, I gotta create this on my own terms. I gotta understand what works for my body and my health. And, and when I rearranged that and completely abandoned the notion of these are the things I should do, and said, here are my priorities. I wanna have time with my kids. I wanna be able to talk to them. I wanna put them down and I wanna walk them to school, but I'll work really hard in the day and I'm willing to work into the evenings when required. That changed everything for me. When I stopped trying to force myself to the gym at 5.30 and I went every day at four before I picked up my kids, I was so much nicer and happier and well balanced and didn't feel this, um, this, you know, this, this pressure to just keep working. So it, it, it was the little tweaks as opposed to the, the big things. Um, but it was really about, it was really about listening to what was going to work for me and just sh shutting out the shoulds from the rest of the world. That was the biggest thing. 
play brings out that parasympathetic side of our nervous system. Play brings out creativity. And as adults, we kind of let it go by the wayside. And I think one of the things that kids bring to the table in the conversation with kids is it's, it's just their nature that they are going to default to play or look for play in any given situation. And it, there's huge physiological benefit to play as adults, but also I'm like, what's the point? What's the point on working 60 hours a week and having this business empire and being an entrepreneur if you're not actually making time for play on your terms? It's amazing when I can get patients or people to start to embrace play in their life, what that does to their quality of life. It's just, a, it's a totally different way and new layer of looking at being an adult. The one, the one analogy or metaphor that I use when we're talking about people's health and, and in really investing in it is, would you be willing, are you okay with just paying off the minimum on your credit card every month? And they're like, well, I can see how people get in that situation, but no, I wouldn't do that. I don't wanna pay these huge interest rates. I don't wanna have that cost associated with it. And I said, it's the same thing with your health. When you're tired and the only solution you provide for your body is to drink more coffee, when really you need to recover, or you're deficient in nutrients, or you don't take time to create an eating or meal strategy that actually invests back in your health, what you're doing is you're paying off that minimum on that credit card at the expense of your health. So the interest payment is really what's happening with respect to your health. It's just, it's not sustainable. You finally reach a point where that credit card company's like, look, he, like you don't have access to me anymore. And so it works the same way. Everyone will hit a ceiling of complexity in their business and everyone hits a ceiling of complexity with respect to their health. We just don't know when it's actually gonna come. Our focus with the Anthropology Podcast is to focus on the business, body, brain, and inner badass of female entrepreneurs and go-getters. So I really want women who can, well, we, we'll sometimes let men on the podcast, but I really want guests who are going to amplify those areas of uh, women's lives. And so for us, even with the brand anthropology, it's not just entrepreneurs. We say entrepreneurs and go-getters. And we also feel like entrepreneurs are kind of, they're kind of caught sometimes in the towers or like the entrepreneurial spirit is not necessarily always manifested as an entrepreneur. And we want people who can speak to that, the breadth of that experience for people. So when you, we, we talk about brain health, we talk about biohacking, we talk about mindset. We spend a huge amount of time talking about mindset. The world needs the leadership that women bring to the table, the unique way that women nurture our unique capacity. I think women are physiologically predestined for creation. We literally can build life. We have all the pieces we need to actually step into a role as someone creating a business. So I think that there, the timing is ripe. I think people are looking for the type of leadership that women can, uh, can bring to the table. You just need an idea that solves a problem. And it's the biggest thing that I say when I'm having conversations with women, I'm like, what problem do you want to solve? And who is the audience who needs that problem solved for them? And when you can get some clarity around that piece, you've got the founding pieces to start, to start a business and then bring what you do best to the table, put your own unique stamp on it, um, and then create a community of people around you who are going to support that desire. I think women do well in community. We do well with people around us, who support us, who, who cheer us on. And part of making a business successful is finding that tribe and that group of people who get what it is that you are doing. I think the most important thing people walking into this is knowing that being an entrepreneur is no different than any other spiritual journey you are going to embark upon. You are going to be confronted with naysayers. You, it, is, it is the hero's journey is what it really is all about. And that's where your guide or your coach or your friends, your cohort matter so much because you need a guide as the hero of the story to walk you through it, to tell you, you know what, keep going when you're slaying the dragons or when it's a really dark period or when it's really, really hard. It is for every hero on any given journey and when you recognize that and lean into that it enables you to confront those those challenges with a completely different mindset than if you view it as oh the universe has told me not to do this but it hasn't at all it is a journey of growth it's going to take you to a different place you just have to be willing to push through you have to be willing to keep going and if you've you've got a vision and you know your purpose and you've got something that you really want to contribute to the world just focus on that piece and take the next right step. I love Megan's choice of the word go-getter because not everyone sees themselves as the traditional entrepreneur. It's true, it's actually, you know, we struggled with it and it's why we came up with the tag Women Celebrating Women because we want this to be inclusive. And also it's so important to take care of your health as we really, really know. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Thank you so much for watching and make sure to check out Megan's podcast. We've got a link below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit on that bell button. That way you'll get notice of all of our videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. See you next time.